Amen. So, uh, the Lemuralia is a Roman practice that is very similar to the Celtic or Druid practice of, uh, you know, appeasing the spirits. So, naniniwala sila na bumabalik ang mga patay, ang kaluluwa ng mga patay. Kaya sa kanilang mga dinner table, merong mga bakanteng upuan at merong mga pagkaing nakalaan para sa kanila. At sila rin ay nagkukostume para kapareho sila. Okay, so these are basically the pagan origin of Halloween. And uh, if you're a Christian, you might say, you, in, spoiler ka naman, Pastora, bakit naman, eh, fun naman yan for kids, di ba? But did you know that the Bible is very explicit in its command, Ephesians 5, 7 to 15? The Bible forbids involvement in these worthless deeds of darkness. Ephesians 5, 7 to 5. Napakalinaw po ng uh, sinasabi po doon sa New Testament of uh, the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Okay, 7 to 15. Let me just uh, start from 7. In Him, we have redemption through His blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 7 okay sorry therefore do not be partners with them very uh, clear di ba wag ka raw sumama sa kanila do not be partners with them for you were once darkness but now you are light in the Lord live as children of light for the fruit of light consists in all goodness righteousness and truth and find out what pleases the Lord. Verse 11 Have nothing to do with these fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. And this is what I'm doing. I'm just following what the scripture is saying. Expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For it is light that makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Wake up, O sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Amen. So as a Christian, you should be wise. You should not be unwise participating in the deeds of darkness. These are pagan practices that has pagan origins that has nothing to do with scripture, that has nothing to do with Christianity, and has nothing to do with the Holy God. Because these are glorifying the dead, the, the spirits. And who are these spirits? These are the fallen angels and Satan and his demon cohorts. We are actually glorifying them. Masaya sila ngayon because it is their day. You know, they, we are uh, glorifying them. We are giving them special uh, special day to celebrate amen did you know that uh, the bible says god is a god of the living and not god of the dead ang ating pong dios ay dios ng mga buhay at hindi po dios ng mga patay and so ang panginoon po ay uh, nais tayong magising sa katotohanan that this halloween is a pagan practice and god explicitly explicitly commands us not to take part in any of these practices why because it has something to do with the dead it has something to do with the demon spirits and deuteronomy chapter 18 is very uh, explicit too on that deuteronomy 18 let me just read from the book of uh, deuteronomy 18 verses 10 to 12 the lord your god Deuteronomy 18, 10. Let no one be found among you who sacrifice his son or daughter in the fire. Amen? So, noong unang panahon, may gumagawa nito. Sinasacrifice nila yung kanilang sons and daughters in the fire. And the Druids were doing that, throwing their babies in the fire so that pagdating ng kinabukasan, mga buto-buto at ashes ng mga babies ang kanilang makukuha doon. And maybe they get that. This uh, witch 
and necromancers and spiritists, yung mga gumagaw ng black magic, they get powers from these sacrifices. Dito sila kumukuha ng mga kapangyarihan, kaya sila nakakapangkulam, nakakapanggaway, nagkakaroon sila ng, you know, uh, uh, powers per se na kung saan nagagawa nila ang mga supernatural na bagay din. Nakakagawa rin sila sapagkat they do this appeasing these demons. So, sa Deuteronomy 18 verse 10, it is very clear. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, who interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, verse 11, or casts spells, or who is a medium, or a spiritist, or who consults the dead. Yung ikaw ay nak- kinukonsulta mo ang mga dead, kung yung ikaw ay spiritista, ikaw ay medium, kagaya ng mga ibang feature ngayon. And, uh, ngayon, lahat ng mga mga palabas ngayon ay tungkol dito sa mga spiritista ang nakikipag-usap sa mga patay. Meron pa silang mga pang-detect ng mga spirits. Amen? Anong sabi ng Bible? God and the Bible forbids, you know, being a medium or spirit or consulting the dead. Verse 12, Anyone who does these things is detestable to the Lord, abominable to the Lord in other versions of the Bible. And because of these detestable practices, the Lord your God will drive you out those nations before you. And so you must be blameless before the Lord. Yan po yung uh, sa verse 14. The nations you will dispossess, listen to those who practice sorcery. Or divination, but as for you, the Lord your God has not permitted you to do so. And so we are not permitted by the Bible, by the Scriptures, by God to engage in witchcraft, in sorcery, in necromancy, in consulting the dead, in spiritism. Anything that has to do with this is detestable to God. And so there is a consequence. God will drive us out. From His very presence. Because God has nothing to do with this. Sa Leviticus 20, 27, it is the same um, words that God is, permit, is not allowing anything that has to do with black magic, spiritism, and consulting the dead. Je- Leviticus 20, verse 27. Kaya po kung meron kayong mga kamag-anak, mga mahal sa buhay na pumupunta sa mga mangtatawas, albularyo, espiritista, humihingi ng tulong sa kanila for whatever reason and whatever need they have, the Bible says, 27, at verse 20, 27 of Leviticus, A man or woman who is a medium or espiritist among you must be put to death. You are to stone them. Their blood will be on their heads. Galit na galit talaga ang Diyos sa mga ganitong gawain, sa mga kumukonsulta, sa mga espiritista at mga albularyo at mga manggagaway at mga mangkukulam. Yung merong mga perceived supernatural powers consulting and talking to the dead. Amen? Amen. Pero kung panoorin natin sila, during this time of Halloween period, ay uh, tuwan-tuwa tayo. But this is something that God hates to the core. Amen? Amen? And we should not even be watching this or we should not even be, you know, having fun in this. Because these are really detestable in the sight of God. Ayaw po ng Diyos. But this is the time when the devil is celebrating together with his demon cohorts because the world is appreciating them, recognizing them, and giving them their own special day, their own special feast. Piesta ng mga patay. Piesta ng mga spirito. Piesta ng mga santo. Amen? But later on, we will look at that. Sino ba ang mga totoong santo? Amen? So, ito po yung panahon na kung saan ang mga mangkukula may lumalabas. The witch, the witches, the sorcerers, the devil worshippers are making their rituals and sacrifices. Pumupunta po sila sa mga... Uh, Campo Santo or mga sementeryo at sila ay nagkakaroon ng mga ritual ng mga sacrifices at dito sa panahong ito kumukuha sila ng kanilang mga you know, demonic powers 
Ito po yung panahon yun. Marami ang nag-pilgrimage sa banahaw sa panahon ito sapagkat ang mga spirito ay napapaniwala ang mga tao. They are dis they are were able to deceive people trying to believe that it is at this point in time that the spirits are very much alive and ready to give powers to those who want powers. Amen. At totoo po yun that, uh, you know, there are really spirits out there. There are two spirits that are around us. Spirit that is good, who are the angels of the living God, and the spirits who are bad, who are the demon spirits, the fallen angel, nakasama ni Satan na nagrebelde sa Diyos, kaya sila po ay uh, dilagay dito sa lupa, ayon sa aklat ng Revelation chapter 21. So, so during Halloween, it is the belief that the dead could walk among the living. Is that true? Ang, ang, ang mga patay ba ay uh, nakakabalik at sila po ay nakikipag-ugnayan sa mga buhay? Tingnan po natin ang sinasabi ng Bible. Sa Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 5. Let me read. For the living know that they will die, but the dead know nothing. They have no further reward, and even the memory of them is forgotten. Amen? Ano raw pong sabi ng Ecclesiastes 9.5? Ang, yung, yung buhay, the living know that they will die. Alam nila na isang araw mamamatay sila, but the dead, they know nothing. The dead, they know nothing. Wala pong alam yung mga, yung mga dead. But in this context, kaya, kasi kinukuha rin ito at in out of context ng mga Uh, naniniwala sa annihilation nakapagpatay ka na okay lang, wala ka nang mararamdaman kasi wala, patay ka na eh pero hindi, sa Luke 16 in the context of uh, of uh, eternal consciousness, ang Luke 16 po ay nagsasabing kahit patay ka na nakakaramdam ka doon sa impyerno kasi yung rich man and the Lazarus uh, story is that The rich man was in agony according to Luke 16:22 to 24. The rich man was in agony and he was asking for, you know, a drop of water for him to be eased in his pain and agony, but it was impossible because there is a big chasm or gap between Abraham's bosom and Hades where the man who was rich fell into. And Likewise, Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom and he was happy. Amen? So, meron, meron pong consciousness. But in the context of Ecclesiastes, ang Ecclesiastes po kasi ay dapat intindihin natin base sa kanyang tema. The theme of Ecclesiastes is that it is a perspective written by Solomon who had all the riches in the world but in the end he found out that everything is vanity under the sun. So, in the context of Ecclesiastes, It was written from earthly perspective, not from heavenly perspective. Kaya sinasabi niya, once na namatay ka na, wala ka nang alam dito under the sun. Because you are no longer under the sun. You went to your destination which we will you know, tackle later in Hebrews 9.27. Ano ba ang destination ng tao? So, in the, in the context of the book of Ecclesiastes, ang uh, pagkakasulat po nito at ang perspective ay from the earthly perspective na kapag namatay ka na, wala ka nang alam dito sa lupa. You have no knowledge of what is happening whatsoever. Sabi ni, uh, eklis, na, ni uh, ng mga ngaral is that there is no more gaining knowledge or there is no more giving of knowledge. Everything is nothing. Everything is vanity under the sun. 30 times in the book of Ecclesiastes, under the sun as a phrase has been used which means under the sun is under earth. Dito po tayo sa lupa. At ang sinasabi po ni Ecclesiastes sa verse 5, the dead know nothing, ibig sabihin, wala ka nang alam, pag namat, napat, wala ka nang alam patungkol sa daigdig at sa lupa, pagpatay ka na. And so, kung wala ka nang alam, ano pang ginagawa mo dito? Ba't ka pababalik? Hindi ka na makakabalik. Amen? Now, Hebrews 9.27. This is a very powerful verse giving us The answer to our question, where does the dead go? Saan po pumupunta ang mga patay? Hebrews 9.27 Man is destined to die once. Minsan lang daw mamatay ang tao. And after that, the judgment. 
he will face judgment. Hebrews 9.27 And what is that judgment? There are two kinds of judgment. So 2 Corinthians 5.6.8 and Philippians 1.23 Those who are with Jesus, those who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, go to heaven. For Philippians uh, 1.23 is uh, very clear when... Uh, Apostle Paul made his aspirations very clear in Philippians 1.23. He said, but I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. Gusto po ni, ni uh, Apostle Pablo ay, uh, you know, if he departs, he is with Christ. So, sino, saan po pumupunta yung mga na kay Kristo? Kapiling niya doon sa langit. And where is Christ? He is in heaven. Amen? He is in his abode. He is in, he is in his throne. At kung tayo po ay tumanggap kay Jesus bilang ating Lord God and Savior, sinasabi po ng Bible that we are together with Him. Amen? In the heavenlies. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 to 8. 2 Corinthians verse 5, 6 to 8. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. We live by faith, not by sight, because we are confident and prefer to be away from the body to be at home with the Lord. So once we are away from this earthly body, then we are at home with the Lord. Nasaan tayo pag namatay tayo? Dahil tumanggap tayo kay Kristo? Nandun po tayo sa kalangitan. It's in heaven. So that's the first destination. And so if you are not sure, you have no assurance where you will go when you die, you can have that assurance if you receive and accept Jesus Christ in your heart by faith. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ by faith and then you will receive eternal life. And then you will have the assurance that when you die, you will go to heaven. Now, what happens to those who have known Jesus Christ in their lives? So, Matthew 25, 46. Matthew chapter 25, verse 46. Malinaw din po ang sinasabing destination ng mga wala kay Kristo. Matthew 25, 46 says, Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Those who have no Christ in their hearts, when they die, where, do, where will they go? To eternal punishment, to eternal damnation. And where is that? In hell. In hell. Luke 16, 22 to 24. The rich man who suffered uh, in, in Hades, in, in agony, he was in hell. While Lazarus was in, the, in Abraham's bosom. He was happy. He was... Uh, you know, he was happy in the presence of the Lord. Amen? So, ano po yung dalawang destinasyon ng tao? Heaven and hell. Now, is there an intermediary? Did the Bible mention anything that is in the middle? You are not in heaven, you are not in hell, but you are somewhere in the middle waiting for your judgment. And there is such kind of doctrine. There is such kind of belief that pinaniwalaan natin because they say there is purgatory. Purgatory means purga, purge. While you are there in the purgatory, you are in the intermediary state. You are waiting. Habang ikaw ay pinupurga, nililinis, you are being cleansed. How can you be cleansed? By the prayers of your loved ones. Habang ikaw ay pinapanalangin, pinapanalangin, pinapanalangin ng iyong mga mahal sa buhay, ikaw ay unti-unting nalilinis, nalilinis, napupurga sa purgatorio at pag ikaw ay malinis na, makakaakyat ka na sa langit. Hallelujah. But, paano kung walang nananalangin sa'yo para ikaw ay malinis? Paano kung kinalimutan ka na? Ang sabi ni Ecclesiastes, ang sabi ni uh, mga ngaral, sabi niya, they forget you, they forget even your name. Maaalala ka lang nila pag, uh, maaalala ka lang nila pag gusto nila, pero eventually they will forget your name. Ecclesiastes 9.5, which is very true. Amen? 
Because we, you know, at one point in time, we move on. We go on living. And we even forget our loved ones. And so we don't pray for them. We don't even pray. We don't even remember them. But that is what religion has taught us. You give special pamisa. You give special prayer. You give special uh, mas mahal, mas maganda, mas mabalis, makaakyat yung mga mahal mo sa buhay mula sa purgatorio papunta ng langit. And this is a lie from the pit of hell because it is something like you're saying God can be bribed? Pwede mo palang lagyan ng Diyos? Pwede mo pala siyang i-bribe? Mas mahal na mas mahal na pamisa, mas mahal na panalangin, mas mahabang, paulit-ulit na panalangin at pagrorosaryo, mas mabilis aakyat yung mahal mo sa buhay sa langit. E paano naman yung mga mahihirap? Walang pambayad ng special na misa. Paano naman yun? Eh, hindi na makakaakyat ng langit, doon na lang sila. Amen? Mapupurga ng mapupurga, pero hindi naman makakaakyat. And you know, I'm sorry my brethren, but I have read the Bible from cover to cover many times. I have never seen any words such as purgatory. Wala pong purgatorio. Because there's only two, there are only two destiny. There are only two destinations for man, Hebrews 9.27, to be judged whether to go to heaven when you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior or to go to hell when you have missed on the opportunity of accepting Him in your life as Lord God and Savior. Amen? So, yun po ang, uh, yun po yung uh, itinuro sa atin ng religion. There is no intermediary. Nowhere in the Bible can you find the word purgatory because there's only there are only two destinations and that is heaven or hell. And I have I have uh, cited scriptures proving that. Amen? Now, sa Isaiah 26, 14, sabi po doon, they are the dead. They shall not live. They are already deceased. They shall not rise. Thou hast caused every memory of them to perish. Amen? Isaiah 26, 14, hindi na po makakabalik ang mga patay. What are some other additional scriptures? talking about the inability of the dead to come back, to rise again and come back and be in contact with us. Job 7, 9 to 10. As a cloud fades away and vanishes, so the one who goes down to Sheol will never rise again. He will never return to his house, his hometown. He will no longer remember him. Amen? Pag namatay ka na, kalilimutan ka na nila. Amen? Pero... At ang sabi ni Job, you can never go back and rise again. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 8 to 9. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. If you have died, if you are absent in your body, you are forever present in the Lord, in the presence of the Lord. Amen? Matthew 25, 46, these people will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous will go into eternal life. Ecclesiastes 12, 7. The man's dust will go back to earth, returning to what it was, and the spirit will return to God who gave it. And never in the Bible did it say that the spirit will come back and talk to us and get in touch with us. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 to 6, yung yung sinabi ko kanina, never again will they have a part in anything that happens under the sun. Wala na silang magagawa for anything that is under the sun. They know nothing. So, who are the ghosts? Who are these haunted stories? Sino yung nakita ko? Nakita ko yung lola ko. Nakita ko yung nanay ko. Nakita ko yung tatay ko. Miyak pa nga ako eh kasi kinausap ako ng tatay ko. Talaga nakita ko yung multo niya. I mean, maaring nakita mo. I do not uh, debate on that. Maaring nagkaroon ka ng karanasan. Karanasan mo yun eh. Pero ito ang masaklap. Hindi yung tatay mo yun. Hindi si lola mo yun. Hindi yung nanay mo yun. Kahit na kamukha niya. Kamukha ng nanay ko, kamukha ng tatay ko, kinausap niya ako. Hindi mo nanay yun, hindi mo tatay yun. Sino yun? Demonyo yun na nakipag-usap sa'yo. Ang tawag sa kanila ay mga familiar spirits. Demon cohorts who are trying to deceive people 
believe into believing that indeed the dead come back to life and talk to us and that is a lie from the pit of hell because the bible in second corinthians 11 14 says satan himself can masquerade as an angel of light so meron silang ang mga demons spirits and satan himself can masquerade ibig sabihin makokopya nila kaya nga familiar spirit eh bakit Bakit kamukhang kamukha? Familiar nga eh. They are familiar with our loved ones. They have been there observing us, trying to uh, be familiar with our ways so that when they deceive us, parang kapanipaniwala. Kasi nga, something familiar eh. It's not uh, something that is uh, unusual, but something familiar. Yung pong kinagawian natin, yung pinaniwala natin, yung araw-araw na ginagawa natin, yun ang ginagawa niya. And uh, you know what? Yung uh, spirit of the glass is, uh, is a work of the familiar spirit. Kasi if you look at yung mga spirit of the glass, yung mga spiritong nandun sa glass, tama yung mga sagot. Di ba? Pag tinanong mo, tama yung sagot. Hala, alam niya. Hala, alam ng spirito. Alam niya kasi kilala ka niya eh. Familiar spirit nga yan. Alam niya. Alam niya kung ano yung gawi mo. Alam niya kung ano yung habit mo. Alam niya kung sino ang boyfriend mo. Basang-basa ka niya. And that is what you call the familiar spirits. And they are the ones who are trying to copy the faces of our loved ones and appear to us and let us believe that the dead come back to life and talk to us. Amen? So, hindi po totoo yun. Ito po yung... Uh, consequences ng pag uh, paniniwala natin ng hindi natin pinag-aaralan tinatanggap lang natin bilang tradisyon bilang kinamulatan bilang practice na ipinasa sa atin ng ating mga bagulang and uh, i clearly remember when i was young you know at this point in time talagang bongga po talaga yung aming mga celebration ang dami ang dami pagkain nakalagay doon sa altar Tapos, uh, hindi lang pagkain, meron pa diyang alak, isang basong uh, gin. Tapos, meron pang sigarilyo kasi para kay lolo. Yung uh, gin para kay uncle. Amen. Kompleto. Trying to appease these false spirits. You know, believing, trying to believe that these are the loved ones that are coming back to life. And so, we are trying to be good hosts and hostesses. to these beloved loved ones who have been departed. But now we are being awakened to the truth that these are all lies, lies, lies from the pit of hell. And the author of this lie is Satan himself because he masquerades himself as an angel of light trying to defeat us so that he can kill, steal, and destroy. John 10.10. 10. Amen? Anong version that he can masquerade himself as an angel of light? 2 Corinthians 11.14 Tatandaan nyo po yun. Amen? So, there are two, indeed, there are two spirits in this world. Amen? Spirits, hindi po mga patay. Hindi po mga kaluluwa na nagbabalik. Kundi mga spirito. At ang unang spirito ay yung mga anghel ng Panginoon. Ang purpose ng mga anghel ng Panginoon ay tayo ingatan to protect us. God sends His angels to protect us, to protect us, just like Angel Gabriel or, or Angel, uh, yung pong mga anghel na pinadala ng Panginoon. <coughs> and so, ang ikalawa pong espiritu ay yung mga demonyo, yung mga fallen angels na sinasabi sa Revelation 12.9. Amen? Ito po yung mga kasama ni Satan na na-cast out from heaven. And they have come to earth at ang sila po ay naging fallen angels. Sila po yung mga demon, sila po yung mga demonyo. Pero in this point in time, nag-glorify sila. Sapagkat itong ang Halloween period and All Saints Day and All Souls Day is their time to be celebrated. Amen? Biro mo nagkakaroon ng mga party kahit saan-saan sa buong mundo para sila ay uh, bigyan ng, uh, ng tribute. at special na araw. Amen. Pero uh, ang ang Diyos po ay na etchepuera. Kaya ang ano po yung sinasabi ng Panginoon nat, sa, natin sa atin? It is a stern warning. Do not take part in this celebration. Do not take part in these practices. Never. 
take part in these celebrations because this is abhorrable, abominable, and detestable in the sight of God. Never even get in touch with a psychic, a necromancer, a spiritist into your home or into your business. Amen? nag ka ng manguhula o nag ka ng espiritista na merong mga gadget na nadedetect nila kung saan yung mga spirit doon sa iyong business, doon sa iyong bahay. Wag na wag mong gagawin yan kasi you are getting involved with the works of darkness, with the satanic uh, connection. Sapagkat ang mga necromancers, ang mga espiritista, sa Tagalog, mangkukulam, manggagaway, mangbabarang, mangtatawas, manguhula, espiritista at medium, never get in touch with them, never get involved with them because you are not you are not uh, inviting blessing into your home. You are inv inviting curse into your home. Kaya kinakailangan po. In the past, whether knowingly or unknowingly, if you have gotten involved in this, you, nagpunta ka sa manguhula, nagpunta ka sa medium, nagpunta ka sa pakikipag-usap sa mga patay, knowingly or unknowingly, nagawa mo in the past, tingnan mo, ipagrepent mo yan because it is something that will haunt you. It is a connection that will open the gates of hell to attack you and harm you. So, in the past, if you have been involved in uh, spirit of the glass, spirit of the plate, <laughs> joke yun, laro nila yun, mga uli nga nila. <laughs> Hindi po yun na uh, totoo, kundi it's, it's just a joke. So, Kung ikaw ay nagkaroon ng involvement sa mga ganito, alam mo man o hindi. Amen? Ang gagawin po natin ngayon is to repent. Lord, hindi ko alam na yung pagpunta ko sa albularyo, hindi ko alam na yung pagpunta ko sa mangtatawas, akala ko ay uh, isang ordinaryong gawa lamang na kung saan ako ay humahanap ng kagalingan at ang mangtatawas ang nalapitan ko at albularyo ang nalapitan ko sapagkat wala pa ako sa iyo ipinagsisisi ko I repent of this deed because it is a deed of darkness and I don't want to have anything to do with it kaya humihingi ako ng tawad so let us repent knowingly or unknowingly nagawa natin amen and uh, let us stop glorifying and taking part by watching, you know, shows that glorify these demons, that glorify these spirits, that glorify Satan and his demon cohorts. Amen? Let us not patronize them. Let us not uh, enjoy them. Amen? Amen? Although sometimes they are presented as something as fun, pero alam mo ba, pag nanonood ka, limbawa ng mga napopossess sa, sa television, yung mga nangingisay na napopossess, Akala mo, ordinaryong palabas lang yun. That is the spirit and that spirit could come out of the television and come to you because there is such a thing as transference of spirit. Meron pong transference of spirit. Kaya meron yung mga nanunood lang, maya maya sila na yung naupopossess. Kasi lumipat sa kanila. Lilipat sa'yo kapag mahinang spirito mo na hindi mo kayang i-resist. Amen? So, kap marami po yung mga nap napupossess or naaalihan ng masamang espiritu na the demon possessed, ang sabi nga nila, because their spirit are not right with God. But, but if your, your spirit and your heart is right with God, no room for the devil, no room for the demon spirits to come into you. It is like, uh, you know, this glass of water. If this glass of water is full to the brim, there is no other space. For, for drops of water. Amen? Di ba? So, ganun din po sa buhay natin. Kapag ang puso natin ay puno ng Spirito ng Diyos, so Holy Spirit, puno ang puso natin, wala nang lugar ang iba pang Spirito. Spirit of the lust, Spirit of, uh, you know, all the demon spirit that are influencing us and trying to attack us and come into our lives. There's no more room for them. Kaya po, ang gusto ng Panginoon ay, tayo po ay una, to be washed by the blood because it is the blood that cleanses us from all these, uh, you know, uh, maruming mga, mga gawa na naging uh, bahagi tayo in the past of our lives. At pagkatapos nating maklens ng blood ng Panginoon, ang susunod po ay uh, tayo po ay uh, magrepent at tumanggap sa presensya at Holy Spirit sa ating mga buhay para wala na pong lugar ang mga masasamang espiritu. 
So, what am, what am I saying? If, if I may summarize, Halloween, trick or treat, uh, you know, having costumes, marahil ma-justify yung, eh, hindi naman masama yung costume ko eh, fairy nga eh, or uh, butterfly nga eh, or, or princess nga eh, ang ganda nga ng costume ko eh, parang frozen, di ba? But the spirit behind it, why? You know, you, you're still participating in the spirit of Halloween, which is celebrating the dead, celebrating Satan and his and his demon spirits. Amen. So whatever justification you have, it's a no, no, no. Amen. No, no justification, no rationalization, because all of these are in, you know, in homage, paying homage to Satan and his demon spirit. So. Ang mga spirito po dapat ay hindi natin inaapis, hindi po natin uh, inaalayan, hindi po natin inaatangan o pinagsasakripisyohan. Amen? Uh, th- bakit natin sila inaapis? Kasi takot tayo sa kanila eh. Takot tayong mag- may- mag- masamang mangyari sa atin. Yun ang rationalization behind offerings and sacrifices. We try to please this spirit so that they will not harm us. But yay, hindi po tayo takot sa mga spirito. Sila ang takot sa atin. Amen? That is the reality. Ephesians 6, 10 to 11. Spirits need not to be appeased. They need to be wrestled. They need to be fought. Amen? So Ephesians 6, 10 to 11, Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. 4, verse 12, we wrestle against flesh and blood. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spirit forces in the heavenly places. Amen? So ano po ang ginagawa sa kanila? Hindi po natin sila inaalayan. Hindi po natin sila uh, sinusuyo. Hindi po natin sila binibigyan ng mga pabor. Ang ginagawa po natin sa kanila, pinupugutan ng ulo. Nire-wrestle. Amen? Pinapatay. Because that's what the Bible says. We wrestle against this spirit. We don't appease them. And in wrestling them, God has promised victory. Amen? Because, sabi po ng Romans 16, 20, and the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet. Where is Satan and his demon cohorts? They are not above us that we are trying to appease them. They are below us. They are under us. They are under our feet. Romans 16, 20. And so victory is assured for us. Sa Matthew 10, 1, and he called to him, his 12 disciples and gave them authority. Gave them authority over unclean spirit to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. Matthew 10, 1. We have been given authority. So we are above and beyond these spirits. And so we, are, we need not to be scared of them. We need not to be offering them and trying to appeal to them and appease to them or talk to them. Because these demon spirits are deceivers and they are under our authority. Because God has given us authority to cast them out. Ano ro pong gagawin natin sa kanila? I-cast out. Amen? At kapag ginawa ro po natin yon, we have the authority to heal every disease. Because, you know, there are some diseases that have no medical origin. There are no medical explanations. Cancer, for example. Until now, there is no such medical and scientific explanation. Pag tinanong mo, bakit? Healthy living naman ako. Bakit ako nagkaroon ng ganitong sakit? ba? Tanong. Eh, kahit ang doktor po, hindi may paliwanag. Bakit? Kasi ang ugat niya na spiritual. It is a spirit. It is a demon spirit of affliction. It is a demon spirit of disease and affliction that the devil has schemed throughout generations and the devil has made people to believe that it is something that is a blessing. Affliction is a blessing. Amen? Kapag ikaw ay uh, merong uh, affliction or disease at tinanggap mo yan as a blessing from God, eh, ini-invalidate mo ang ginawa ni Jesus sa cross. Because Jesus Christ died on the cross and He shed His blood and He was bruised and He was you know, siya po ay nag-suffer for our redemption. 
that by the stripes of Jesus we are healed, that by the wounds of Jesus we are healed. Isaiah 53, 4-5. And so what do we do with these diseases and affliction? Matthew 10, 1 says, you have the authority, you can cast it out. You can cast out the demon spirit of cancer. You can cast out the spirit of tumor and brain, you know, tumor. You can cast out the cancer of the blood. You can cast out the cancer of the liver. You can cast it out because it is an affliction. It is a demon spirit which you have authority over. You have authority on. Amen? Matthew 10, 1. Second Corinthians, uh, uh, 1 John 4, 4. You are from God, little children, and you have conquered them because the one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. The one who is in you is who? Jesus Christ. Amen? The one who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Who is in the world? Who is the God of this world? Satan and his demon cohorts. At siya po na nasa atin daw ay mas makapangyarihan, mas malakas kaysa siya na nasa mundo. 1 John 4, 4. 1 John 5, 18. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not sin, but the one who is born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. That is the inheritance. That is the legacy of those who have put their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. The devil cannot touch you. Unless with God's permission, just like what happened to Job. But you can only touch you for a certain, you know, degree because the Bible, the God said, okay, you can test Job because, you know, sabi po ni Satan, oh, kaya ka lang naman sinasamba ni Job eh, kasi mayaman yan eh. Kasi meron lahat yan, maganda buhay yan. Eh, kaya maganda nga uh, ang pakikitungo sa'yo pero subukan mo na yan ay, uh, subukan mo na yan ay testingin mo. Tingnan ko kung sasamba pa sa'yo yan. Sabi ni Satanas, anong sabi ng Diyos? I know Job. He's a man of integrity. He loves me. He worship me. He trusts me. So, you can test him. And so, Satan tested. And what happened? Lahat ng anak niya namatay. Lahat ng ari-arian niya namatay. At hindi lamang yun. Emotionally, physically, he was drained and was tested because he was suffering from boils all over his body. Nagkaroon po siya ng, uh, ng ketong, lahat ng uh, buong katauhan niya. At ano pong sabi ni Job? In all of this, sabi ni Job, my Redeemer lives. Amen? He did not go back to God and say, God, why are you doing this to me? Amen? It, it is so easy for us to blame God for what is happening in our lives. It is so easy for us to lose faith and lose our trust in God when we go through testings. But Job is a perfect example and emulation of somebody who has put his trust in God completely, totally, absolutely, that he went through the trials and testings of life. There's only one thing that he can say, my Redeemer lives, my Redeemer lives. And so, indeed, sabi po ng 1 John 5, 18, the devil cannot touch us. Amen. The devil cannot harm us. This is our inheritance as servants of the Lord. Amen. So, kinakailangan alam po natin yung authority natin. And so, let us not have anything to do with the works of darkness. 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Therefore, get out from among them, separate yourselves, and touch no unclean thing. Then I will take you in, sabi ng Panginoon. So, Halloween, All Saints Day, All Souls Day, these are all pagans in origin. And God is commanding us, separate yourselves. Get out from among them and touch no unclean thing. Amen. These things that we offer to the dead and the demon spirits, yung mga food. Amen. Para sa mga practices ng necromancy, kasi inalay yun sa mga demonyo, Kinikip nila yun kasi may mga powers yun eh. Pero sa ating mga nilinis ng dugo ng Panginoon, we, have, we don't touch that. We don't have anything to do with that. Because God is, sep God is calling us to get out and separate ourselves from them. Amen po ba? Amen. So do not give room for the devil an opportunity to harm you by opening your lives 
in and practicing things like you know uh, uh, giving going to Halloween parties and doing this costume. At uh, kung minsan nga akala natin harmless lang naman yun eh. Gusto ko lang naman yung anak ko mag-enjoy. Kasi uh, binila ko siya ng costume. Ang cute-cute ng costume niya eh. Amen. Proverbs 22.6 Train a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not turn from it. You start from your child while he is young. You know, ibulat mo siya sa katotohanan. Don't let him do practices like you know halloween because it is something that is a homage to the devil and his demon cohorts no matter how cute it is no matter you know how fun it is because these are works and deeds of darkness that the lord is calling us to get out from separate from second corinthians six seventeen. amen amen so uh kina at uh, nakakalungkot po kasi ngayon, unknowingly, we are using our kids, sacrificing them and taking part in the works of darkness and the devil. Amen? Kagaya nung unang panahon, 4,000 years ago, the Druids were, used, were doing this, sacrificing their children, throwing them into the bonfire. And now we are throwing our children into the pits of darkness by letting them participate in pagan and demonic practices. Glorifying Satan and his demon cohorts. Amen. Is this such a heavy preaching? Ito po ba ay offensive na? Pasensya na po. Sabi niyo, naku naman, napaka-spoiler mo naman. Hindi na makaka-join yung anak ko niyan sa Halloween. Paano naman yung costume niya? Lagi ko yung hinahanda. Fairy pa naman yun. Ang ganda-ganda niyang fairy. Ang cute-cute. Amen. Ay, nasa inyo pa rin po ang decision. I'm just telling you the truth. And then at the end of the day, it is for you to decide. So how can we depart from these things? You know, because the Bible says, do not indulge in these things. You know, do not indulge in Halloween parties and, you know, doning, you know, demonic costumes. Diba? Kaya nga yung mga costume nila is mga pangit, diba? Mga, you know, as, as hellish as it could be. You know, mas pangit, mas maganda kasi yun ang magiging best costume sa party. Okay? And to whom are you giving homage to? Amen? Papangitan. Kasi pangit si Satan eh. Amen? Pangit si Satan. Siya ang pinakapangit na ninalang nung siya yung nagrebelde sa Diyos. He's the ugliest person ever. And his demon cohorts are the ugliest creatures ever. And during Halloween, we are paying tribute to them. You know, enjoying and basking in the in the in this tradition and practice of you know donning the ugliest costume yung pinaka pinaka hellish na costume yung pinaka kamukha ni, ni ni satan but you know this has something to do with you know connecting to the dead so do not indulge in this the bible says how do we do that? James 4, 7. Submit yourselves to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You resist the temptation. You resist the temptation of, you know, doning, doning something that has to do with, uh, with Halloween parties. Ephesians 4, 27. Do not give the devil an opportunity. Amen? Wag mo siyang bibigyan ng puwang. Wag mo siyang bibigyan ng lugar. Amen? So, that is all about Halloween. And I pray that God has opened your heart and now you know it is of pagan origin. It is demonic practice. And so God condemns it. We do not take part in any of it. Now, after Halloween, what comes next? All Saints Day. Diba? Ang All Saints Day, maganda yung, ano yung, maganda yung uh, intention. And the intention is to remember the saints. To remember the dead. And uh, remembering, no problem. You know, we remember our loved ones. We always remember them because we love them. But praying to them is another. Amen? Because we don't only remember it. We pray to them. We talk to them. We ask help from them. No matter what justification you say. Hindi, para lang naman humihingi ka ng tulong sa mga kalimbawa, sa mga brethren. Di ba? Uy, pag-pray mo naman ako kasi may exam ako. Uy, pag-pray mo naman ako kasi meron akong pinagdadaanan. Di ba? So, 
hindi ka hindi iba yon sa paghingi mo ng tulong kay Saint Jude, kay Saint Agnes, kay Saint Anne, kay Saint Gertrude, Saint Anthony, Saint Vincent, lahat ng santo na hinihingan mo ng tulong. San Pedro, ikaw ay mananabong humihingi ka ng tulong kay San Pedro para manalo ka sa sabong. 'Di ba? Kung ikaw ay uh, walang uh, walang anak, humihingi ka ng tulong sa ubando, sa santo ng ubando para ikaw ay magkaanak. So, walang pinagkaiba yun sa humingi ako ng tulong sa kapatid. Uy, pag-pray mo naman ako. Malaki ang pagkakaiba nun. Kasi, ang Bible, hindi sinabing mag-pray ka sa tao o sa santo. Ang sinabi ng Bible, mag-pray ka sa Diyos. Sa Matthew 6.9, Our Father in Heaven. Our Father who art in Heaven. Kanino ka magpe-pray? Walang sinabing pumunta ka kay Saint, Saint Anthony, Saint uh, Peregrine, Saint uh, Vincent, Saint Gertrude, Saint Anne, Saint Agnes, lahat po ng santo, name it. Never in the Bible was it mentioned that people pray to saints. People pray to dead saints. These are dead people. These are dead saints that we are asking to. But in the Bible, Paul asked prayer from the saints. Amen. Sino po yung mga yung mga yung mga saints? Okay? So uh so sino po yung mga saints? Sa Philippians chapter 1 verse 1. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus and to all the saints in Christ who are at Philippi with the overseers and deacons. So sino po yung tinawag na saints sa mga Bible? Sila po ba yung mga patay na? Sino po yung inaddress ni Paul dito? Yung mga saints sa Philippi. Saints in the church of Philippi and they are alive and well. Sila po ay buhay, hindi po mga patay. Inaddress po nila ni, sila ni Paul, the saints in Philippi. Amen. Sa Romans 1.7, To all those who are in Rome as God's beloved ones, called to be saints. Romans 1.7 Sila raw po ay yung mga taga Roma, sila po ay mga saints. Philippians 4.21 Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are one with me greet you. Amen. The saints in Christ Jesus in Philip in the Philippian church. So 1 Corinthians 1:2. To the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints, together with all those who are in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both the Lord and ours. Amen? So, sa Church of Corinth, Paul, the Apostle, addressed them as saints, called to be saints in Christ Jesus. So, as long as you are in Christ Jesus, you have put your trust in the Lord Jesus, you are a saint. You are a living saint. And there's no, I have no problem addressing the dead saints like in Hebrews 11 Hebrews 11 is a chapter dedicated to the saints to the heroes of faith they were the saints who have fought the good fight and they have finished the race that's why in Hebrews 11 they are being you know given tribute to as the heroes of faith and uh, their lives serve as an inspiration to us so that just like them, just how they, how they have fought the good fight and they have finished the race, we are also encouraged to do so. But that's just about it. We don't pray to them. We, we look at their lives and find inspiration and strength and encouragement, but we do not pray to them. So much so that we do not ask them for help. Because it is only God who can give us help. Amen. But they are just like intermediary, intercessors. Sila yung namamagitan. Parang ikaw, pag meron kang, parang meron kang uh, uh, pangangailangan sa tatay mo, dadaan ka kay nanay para sabihin mo kay nanay, nanay, sabihin mo naman kay tatay na meron akong kailangan. Alam niyo po sa bahay namin, pag may kailangan yung mga anak ko, hindi na sila dumadaan sa akin. Direkta na sila kay tatay, kay, kay pastor, kay papa nila. Kasi mas generous si papa nila <laughs> sa akin. Amen? So, meron silang access, direct access. 
So why, why go to mommy when you can go directly to daddy? Very simple, di ba? Yung logic natin. Why pray to the dead when you can pray to God? These are dead people whom we are trying to, to uh, talk to so that they, our prayers and petitions can be brought to God the Father in heaven. There's nowhere in the Bible where it says we can talk to the dead so that this dead can talk to God and bring them our prayers and petitions. There's nothing in the Bible that says that. But there's a lot of citations in the Bible when Paul talked to the living Christians in Philippi, in Corinth, in Ephesus, in Rome, asking for prayers. Paul was saying, pray for me. Your prayers are like a, you know, holy sacrifice. Your prayers are very helpful to me. So Paul was asking prayers from all these churches. And to whom did Paul ask prayers from? From the living. From the living saints, not the dead saints, not the dead ones, not the dead people. Because anything that has to do with talking to the dead, oh my goodness, that is necromancy. That is black magic. That is spiritism. That is talking to mediums. That's what the Deuteronomy 18 and Leviticus has you know, cited. Amen po ba? Kaya po, tayo po ay uh, gusto ng Panginoon na gisingin sa katotohanan ito. Because whether... You know, we justify or not, sasabihin po natin, oh, no, we are not praying to the saints. We are just, you know, telling them our problems so that they can tell to God. Sabi ko nga, wala namang ganun eh. Sabi po ng Bible sa Matthew 6, 9, Our Father in heaven, holy be your name. To whom do you address? To the Father in heaven. And we pray in the name of Jesus. John 14, 13 to 14. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me in anything, the Lord Jesus says, I will do it. And so that's why we, we go to the Father in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 26, 27. We do not know what to pray for, but it is the Spirit who help us through groanings and travailings. Romans 8, 26 to 27. And, ito ang pinakamaganda. Sa Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. Amen? Hebrews chapter 4, 14 to 16. If I may read Hebrews 4, 14 to 16. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are yet was without sin. So, 16. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Why go somewhere else when you can approach the throne of grace of God directly? Amen? Pwede kang lumapit ang sabi sa Hebrews 4.16. By the, by the grace of God, we can approach the throne with confidence. Not in our own righteousness, but in the righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom we have accepted as our Lord God and Savior. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5 is very explicit when it says, For there is one God and there is one mediator. There is one mediator between God and man, and that is the Christ Jesus. There is only one mediator. There are no many mediators like St. Jude and St. Anne and St. Gertrude and St. Vincent and St. Peter. There is no other mediator. 2 Timothy 2.5 There is only one mediator and that is the Lord, Christ, Lord Jesus Christ. And so there is no mediatrix. Amen? No mediator, no mediatrix. But our religion teaches us that there is a mediatrix. 
There is a woman that intercedes between God the Father and us here on earth. And that is the mother of God, as they say. Holy Mary, mother of God. That is a very blasphemous declaration because there is no mother of God. Because God is the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. So if you give God a mother, then the mother is more powerful than God himself. Because there is no son or there is no, you know, wala pong anak kung walang ina. Kaya mas ma nauna pa yung ina kapag binigyan mo ang Diyos ng, ng ina. Hello? So I am sorry if this is offending you. But it comes from the heart that is, you know, full of love. That I want you to be awakened because God is, you know, sabi ng Bible, hindi maikli ang kamay ko para kayo maabot eh. Hindi ako bulag para hindi kayo makita eh. Hindi ako bingi para hindi kayo makarinig. Pero merong humaharang at ang humaharang ay ang kasalanan at ang pinakamalaking kasalanan ng ating bayan ay ang fanaticism and religiosity and idolatry. Because we have exchanged the glory for men. Hindi po natin ibinigay ang glory para sa Diyos. At ang glory po ay binigay natin sa kung sino-sino. At ang tulong po ay hinihingi natin sa kung sino-sino. At hindi po tayo humihingi ng direkta sa Diyos. Samantalang meron tayong access. Ang sabi ng Hebrews 4.16 You can approach the throne of grace with confidence. Because of the Lord Jesus Christ in our lives. Pero binabaliwala natin yun. Patuloy po natin hindi yun ginagawa sapagkat tayo po'y tinuruan ng ating relihiyon ng mali. Tinuruan po tayong lumapit kung kani-kanino at humingi ng tulong kung kani-kanino. Samantalang ang mga ito ay walang magagawang tulong sapagkat sila'y mga patay na. Wala pong record sa Biblia na ang mga patay doon sa langit ay nak naririnig ang ating mga petition, naririnig yung ating mga panalangin. There's nothing like that in the Bible that the dead who are there in heaven hear us and can do something for us. Why? Because they are already dead. They have nothing to do with anything that is under the sun. They know nothing, sabi ng Ecclesiastes 9.5. Because they are no longer under the sun. They are, you know, they are, they are already there in heaven. And they have no capability to hear us. Why? Because they are not God. They have limitations. Amen? They are spirit beings, yes. But they are enjoying to be in the presence and in the bosom of the Lord. How can, how can one Saint Agnes hear the petition of millions of people at the same time? How can one Saint Vincent hear the petition of millions of people all over the earth at the same time. Only one can do that. The omniscient God. The all-knowing God. And there is no other omniscient. Amen. Only God. Ang Diyos lang ay may, ang may kakayanan. He is the all-knowing omniscient God and omnipresent God. He is anything and everything all over. That He is God. And no saint, you know, how, you know, kahit na gaano pa sila ka, kagaling nung nandito sila sa mundo, nobody can do that. Wala pong makaka, makakagawa nun. Only God can hear our prayers and petitions. That's why God is telling us to approach Him, His throne of grace, because we can call Him Abba Father. Amen. He is our Abba Father. Romans chapter 8. Amen. So, makikita po natin na sa ating pong pag-aaral, ang All Saints Day is a practice, a feast that has been made by religion. The intention is good because it is to commemorate the dead saints. But the Bible is not actually you know, encouraging that we commemorate the dead saints, you know, we pay tribute to them, but we have gone beyond commemorating because we have, we have asked them for help. 
We have made them mediators and mediatrix. But 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5, there is no other mediator between God and man, and that is the Son, Christ Jesus. Amen. And so when you go to the Father, do not go to St. Anne, do not go to St. Vincent, do not go to St. Peter, do not go to St. Paul. Go to the Father in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the right way. And is this offending you? I am sorry from the bottom of my heart, but this is being preached out of love because the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Amen. So in summary, with, the, with regards to the celebration of All Saints Day, the saints are not the ones who are dead in heaven, but the saints are the living saints who have accepted Jesus Christ in their hearts as their personal Lord, God, and Savior. It is you and me. If you have Jesus Christ in your heart, you are a saint. You don't wait to be canonized. You don't wait to be beatified. You don't wait to be proclaimed by the Pope to be a saint. And you don't wait to go to heaven to be a saint because now you are a saint. Ano pong ibig sabihin ng saint? It's taken from the Greek word hageos. Hageos means separated, set apart, holy unto the Lord. That's what it means. So if you are separated from the world and you are living your life, a holy life, according to the you know, ways of the scriptures, then you are a saint. You are separated unto God. You are separated unto the Lord. And you need not be beatified. You need not be canonized. You need not be proclaimed by Vatican to be a saint. Because you are a saint if you live your life a holy life. A true follower of Jesus Christ. Just like the ones that were mentioned in Hebrews 11. So the saints are not the ones who are in heaven. The saints are the ones who are here on earth trying to live and please the Lord. Number two, the saints do not become saints by beatification or canonization, as I have said. Saints become saints by receiving Jesus Christ in their hearts by faith. That's how you become a saint. It's not by some ritual or, or uh, you know, somebody bestows it upon you, the title, amen? But it is a title that is given because you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord, God, and Savior. So, and most importantly, saints are not meant to be revered, prayed to, or worshipped. Now, you can debate me on this and say, we are not worshipping, we are not praying to them. Oh, paulit-ulit mo nga ang ginagawa eh. Paulit-ulit nga, di ba? Bini, binabilang mo pa yung butil. Kailangan mo, huwag sumobra. Eh, nakatulog ka. Ay, sana nga ba ako? Balik ka na naman. Babalikan mo na naman. So, you say you are not praying to them? You are praying to them. You revere them. Okay? Now, you can debate me on this, but I, I practice this. Meron akong isang malaking altar. At doon sa altar na yon nandoon ang iba't ibang santo. At araw-araw, tinitirikan ko yun ng kandila. Bawat linggo, inaalayan ko yun ng bulaklak. And you don't say, you revere them? What is the candle for? What are the flowers for? That's a form of worship. And prayer is a form of worship. That's why God wants us to approach Him, to pray to Him, because prayer is talking to God. So it's, we are missing a lot of opportunity of talking to God by talking to anybody else other than God. Kinausap na natin lahat ng taong patay, pero hindi man lang natin makausap ng diretso ang ating amang sumasalangit. At napakarami po nating sinayang na pagkakataon na makapiling ang presensya ng Diyos because we have been, you know, indoctrinated with the wrong doctrines and wrong beliefs and wrong catechism. But it is now time that God is calling us to the truth. 
God is saying, stop revering these dead people. Because this is actually necromancy. Anything that has to do with talking with the dead is necromancy. Now, I'm sorry for this. But I know because we love our loved ones very much. And they have already been departed. And we always ask them, Nanay, tatay, tulungan mo kami dito. Tulungan mo kami na ang buhay namin ay maging maayos. Bantayan mo kami. Diba? Ganun po tayo. Kasi mahal na mahal natin sila eh. At hindi po natin kasi narinig yung ganitong turo. But as I have said, they cannot hear us no longer. They cannot hear us no longer. And so if you want someone to protect you, if you want someone to help you, it is God who help us. Because the Lord says, come to me, those of you who are heavily laden, and I will give you rest. It is the Lord who help us. It is the Lord who gives us rest. It is not Saint Rita. It is not Saint Sylvester. It is not Saint Agnes. It is not all these intercessors as we believe them to be. Because there's only one intercessor, one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. Now, why have we for the longest time recognized these saints as our intercessors? Because our tradition, because our religion, because our catechism, because our dogmas taught us to believe in such kinds of you know, false beliefs and false teaching. No, so, there is no saint or any other mediatrix that can pave the way for us to enter the throne of Jesus Christ. But only the Lord Jesus, only, only Jesus Christ can help us go to the Father. Amen po ba? Malinaw po ba iyon? Pasensya na po kung may mga nasagasaan. Pasensya na po kung merong mga kinamulatan at relihiyong nasa gasaan pero ito po ay sinasabi ko out of pure love and concern because as I was in the past I was enslaved to this practice pag may exam ako noon lumalapit ako doon sa altar tapos talaga umiiyak ako humingi ako ng tulong doon sa sa kahoy na nandun sa harapan ko inahalikan ko pa yun Kahit na punong-puno ng alikabok. Amen? At binibilhan ko ng kandila at binibilhan ko. Now, do you say that that is not reverence? Do you say that that is not idolatry? Do you say that that is not putting your trust into something? That is putting your trust into something other than God. And God hates it. And God does not like it. Amen? Romans 8.15 The spirit you receive does not make you slave so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about adoption to sonship. You're adopted sons of God. And so, by him you can cry, Abba, Father. You have direct access to your Abba, Father. You don't have to pass by any other uncle, auntie, mediatrix, mommy, mama. O kung sino pa man, because we, can, you have direct, we have direct access to our, our Abba Father. And so, asking believers here on earth to pray for us is biblical. As I've said, 2 Corinthians 1.11, you also must help us by prayer, ang sabi ni Pablo. Ephesians 1.16, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayer. So, sino ang nagpe-pray? Yung mga buhay. Si Pablo, pinapag-pray niya yung kanyang mga tupa. At the same time, si Pablo humihingi ng prayer sa kanyang flock, sa kanyang mga kapwa Kristiyano. Philippians 1.19, For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance. Amen? So, hindi po masama. 2 Timothy 1.3, I thank God whom I serve as did my ancestors with a clear conscience as I remember you constantly in my prayers night and day. Paul the Apostle asked the saints, the living saints for prayer. He did not ask the dead saints for prayer. Malinaw po ba iyon? 
Is it as clear as the day? Sun in the daytime and moon in the nighttime. Tayo po ba ay nagkakaintindihan? But nowhere in the Bible it is mentioned anyone asking for someone in heaven to pray for him or anyone in heaven praying for those who are here on earth. There's nothing like that that is mentioned in the Bible. This is certainly unbub unbiblical. The Bible does not indicate that Mary or Pasensya na po, nasabi ko na. Or any other saint called saints in heaven hear what we pray for because they are all dead people who have been resurrected and given the spirit but they also have limitations. There is only one omniscient living God who can hear our petitions. Amen? Who can hear the millions and billions of petitions every day. We can bombard God with our prayers and petitions and He is, you know, sisiw lang sa Kanya yun sapagat napakalaki niyang Diyos. Pero ang, ang mga santo ay limitado. Meron silang limitations. Amen? And they cannot do anything to help us. And so let us not help, ask help from them. Let us ask help from the one and true living God. And that is our Father in heaven. James 5, 17 to 18. A prayer offered to God in faith according to God's will from a redeemed and pure heart will be heard. Amen? So you don't need anyone to petition for you. You don't need anyone to intercede for you. You don't need anyone to intermediate for you because a prayer in faith according to God's will from the redeemed with a pure heart will be heard. God hears your prayer. As long as you have a pure heart and you have faith in the God whom you are asking for help. Just like in the example of Elijah. Sabi po ng James 4, 17 to 18. Elijah prayed earnestly that it would not rain for three years and it did. And then when he asked for the rain to pour, it did. Amen? That is the power of prayer of a righteous man. Just like Elijah. And that is what God wants us to do. You know what? Praying to the dead is necromancy. And praying to the dead is idolatry. It is putting your trust into something other than God. God will not allow His glory to be shared with anybody according to the Bible. For God is a jealous God. You don't call, nakakalungkot po eh, we call on people that we don't even know. Because they have been, you know, put, they have been taught to us by religion. But we don't call on God who has the power to answer our prayers. And I pray that from now on, you be awakened to this truth that when you need the help, you go to God. In the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Am I telling you to abandon your religion? If your religion is deceiving you and giving you wrong practices and beliefs, then so be it. I am sorry. But I have been once enslaved to religion and dogmas and practices and tradition. But one day I read the word of God and I have known the truth and the truth has set me free. John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. So prayer could be a form of worship because when you pray, you talk to God. Pero nakakalungkot po, we pray and we talk to kung sino-sino. We don't talk to our God. God longs to be with us. God longs to hear us. Because he said, come to me. Those of you are heavy laden and I will give you rest. And so because prayer is a form of worship, we should direct our prayers to the rightful recipient of this worship. And that is no other than our Father in heaven. In the name of his Son, Jesus Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit. Why pray to man? 
when you can talk to God? Why pray to the dead when you can talk to the living God? Amen? And I pray that today we will all come to a realization that we have been enslaved to religion for the longest time enslaved to wrong practices and wrong doctrines for the longest time and i'm not saying this to hurt you and i'm not saying this to offend you but i am saying this to awaken you so that before it's too late we can put our trust in the one and true living god because he is the god of the living not of the dead ang dios ay dios ng mga buhay hindi po ng mga patay Kaya po sa buhay po natin, ang nais ng Panginoon, ibigay natin sa Kanya yung totoong pagsamba, yung totoong uh, uh, paglilingkod, yung totoong panalangin. Alam niyo po si Pedro sa Acts 10, 25 to 26, when Peter entered, Cornelius met him, and Cornelius fell at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter said, Stand up, I too am a human. Peter did not accept worship. Peter did not accept adoration. Ano pong ginawa ni Cornelius? Lumuhod siya. Kay Pedro. Sabi ni Pedro, tumayo ka ako rin ay tao. Ano pong ginagawa natin ngayon? Lumuluhod po tayo. Let us not fool ourselves. Amen? Hindi lamang tayo lumuluhod. Nagtitirik pa tayo ng kandila. Hindi lamang tayo nagtitirik ng kandila. Nagaalay pa tayo ng bulaklak. And what do you call that? That is reverence. That is worship. And to whom do we offer this worship? This reverence to dead people. Dead people who have been dead centuries ago. But we still revere them. We still give them worship. We still give them adoration. But Peter said, Do not worship me because I am too a human. Lumuhod po si Cornelius. Lumuhod. You know, that is giving reverence when you when you kneel down. And that is what we are doing. Amen. Hindi lamang po tayo lumuhod, namamanata pa tayo hanggang sa magkaroon ng sugat yung mga tuhod natin. Amen. Nasusugat yung mga tuhod natin tapos sapagkat lumalakad tayo ng paluhod. And you cannot fool yourself. And you cannot fool God because that is a form of reverence and worship which is a wrong practice because only God deserves worship. Kaya ang, kaya ang Panginoon, kapag meron tayong mga idols sa puso natin, anything that we regard and worship you know, more than our God, He deals with us. Nire-rebuke tayo ng Panginoon, tinatapik tayo, pinapalo tayo kung kinakailangan because God is a jealous God. He doesn't want that worship and glory be given to any other. And so God wants us to be like Peter, you know, uh, to say, stand up. You don't worship me. You don't bow to me. You don't kneel to me. I am only human. God deserves worship. Siya po ang luhuran natin. Siya po ang tawagan natin. Siya po ang alayan natin. Amen. Ang nakakalungkot, pinaparada natin yung napakaraming mga mga idols natin eh. Tapos binibihisan natin, iniilawan natin. And this, sabi ng Bible, ako, I'm going to this na, wala po akong magagawa. But the, sabi ng Bible, ito po ay uh, mga idols and God hates idolatry. Second Chronicles 33.15 And He took away the strange gods and idols out of the house of the Lord and all the altars that He had built in the mount of the house of the Lord in Jerusalem and cast them out of the city. Ano po ang gusto ng Panginoon na gawin natin sa ating mga idols? Durugin, wasakin, alisin. Basagin daw po natin yung mga altar. Hello? Meron po ba tayong mga altar na ang laman ay mga Diyos, mga idols and images? This is something that God wants us to take away. Sabi po doon, cast them out of the city. God wants us to take them out of our household because these idols are inviting not blessing but curses. Leviticus 26 verse 1. You shall make you no idols nor graven images, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up an image of stone in your land 
to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. The Lord is wanting us to take away all our graven images, images that have been carved out of stone, and not bow down to them. Hello? You rationalize and say, I do not bow down. I do not worship. I do not give them reverence. No, you do. You give them reverence. You bow down. You pray to these images. You even put procession in honor of them. You give them adoration and worship. There are some festivals that are in honor of them. And you pray to them. You pray to the God of the harvest, to the saint of the harvest. You pray to them. You celebrate festivals and feasts in honor of them. And the Lord just wants us to be able to cast away these idols in our lives and in our homes. Because these idols are abominable in the sight of God whether we believe it or not. Beloved, 1 John 4, 1, and I would like to end in this. Do not believe every spirit, but test the spirit to see if they are from God. For many false prophets have gone into the world. 1 John 4, 1 is asking us to test the Spirit. Let us not just accept what tradition, what religion, what catechism has taught us, but let us test vis-a-vis -vis the Word of God. What does the Bible say? And today, I have expounded on our practice of Halloween and All Saints Day and all souls day in honor of the dead and i am sorry if it has offended you because anything that revere the dead is necromancy and necromancy is detestable in the sight of god anything that has offerings of prayers to the dead is abominable in the sight of god and every year this has been a practice that we have been doing in honor of the dead. Now, I am not saying that we will not honor our loved ones because until now, honestly, I miss my papang. But I don't only wait November 1 and November 2 to remember and commemorate him because in my heart, he's always there. And I do not do any spiritual or rituals, special rituals to commemorate my papang. I don't wait for All Souls Day and All Saints, All Saints Day to honor my beloved Papa. Because every day I treasure him in my heart. Every day whenever I think of him, I smile and look at those good memories that I've had with him. And that is what God is wanting us today. First of all, if we have been part of these practices, demonic practices, like Halloween and uh, praying to the dead, let us repent. Let us be cleansed by the blood of the Lamb and let us be given a new fresh start in our spiritual lives. Second, let us depart from what we have been accustomed to, believing that the dead saints can help us. Because saints that are being called by the Bible are living saints just like you and me and let us not justify that we are not honoring this and venerating them and revering them because indeed we are revering them we are in a way worshiping them because we offer prayers to them and we offer flowers to them and we offer our candles to them as a sign of our worship and veneration and reverence. But God is a jealous God, and He would not share His glory with any other person, alive or dead, dead or living. God wants us to surrender our lives to Him, acknowledge Him as our Lord God and Savior, and 
Come out and be separate from the deeds of darkness. Come out and be separate from these practices that have pagan and demonic origins. There's only one God who deserves our praise. There's only one God who deserves our worship. And Satan does not deserve any kind of praise and worship. But it's so sad because at this point in time, right at this moment, people all over the world have revelries, have this kind of practice of uh, celebrating demonic uh, spirits, you know, attributing attributing uh, some kind of powers to them. Kaya nga po, ang mga practice, practitioners of black magic and fortune telling and necromancy and mediums and spiritism, this is their time. Dito, ito po yung time na kumukuha sila ng powers mula sa mga demonic uh, spirits na nagbibigay sa kanila. Sapagkat ito yung panahon na sila po ay nag-glorify at nabibigyan. But let it be na matapos na po yung ganito at nawa po ay uh, tayo po yung nakarinig ng mga ganitong uh, katotohanan ay uh, pagkaroon ng isang bagong simula. Let us repent of, of our sins. Let us repent of our wrong practices. Let us repent for being partakers of these works of darkness. If we have been partakers in the past, tayo pa'y kumonsulta sa mga albularyo, magtatawas, magkukulam, manggagaway, espiritista, mga mediums. Kinakausap natin ang mga patay. Humihingi tayo ng tulong sa mga patay. Humihingi tayo ng gabay sa mga patay. Hindi po silang makakatulong sa atin kundi ang buhay na Diyos na gumawa at lumalang ng langit at lupa. Kaya, knowingly or unknowingly, we have engaged in these demonic practices, we have engaged in uh, spiritism, we have engaged in spirit of the glass, we have engaged in fortune telling, kumonsulta tayo sa mga uh, manguhula, tayo po'y humingi ng tawad, sapagkat ang buhay po natin ay hindi nakasalalay sa, bu sa mga manguhula at sa mga demonic practitioners na ito, Ang buhay po natin ay nakasalalay sa kamay ng Diyos. And if we have been partakers of these deeds of darkness in the past, let us repent. Let us repent and come back to God and say, Lord, forgive me. I have practiced sorcery. I have practiced necromancy. I have talked to the dead. I have asked help from the dead. I have worshipped the dead. I have put my trust in the dead. Because I did not know. I was ignorant. I had no knowledge about the truth. But thank you because you love me. And today, you want to set me free. And so forgive me for my religiosity. Forgive me for my idolatry. Forgive me for my fanaticism. Niyakap ko ang religion. Hindi ko niyakap ang tunay na Diyos. Patawad po. Niyakap ko ang maling turo. Hindi ko niyakap ang Biblia. Patawad po. Pinaniwalaan ko ang mga religious teachers. Pero hindi ko pinaniwalaan ang mga totoong lingkod ng Diyos. Patawad po sapagkat minahal ko ang aking religion. Sinamba ko ang mga maling tao. Sinamba ko ang mga ling Diyos Diyosan. At ngayon ako'y nagsisisi. At ngayon ako'y lumalapit. Humihingi ng tawad. Forgive me for I have been a slave of religion. I have been a slave of wrong practice and tradition. I have loved my tradition more than God. I have loved my wrong teachings more than my God. And so forgive me, cleanse me, wash me by the blood of the Lamb. And today, Jesus, I surrender myself to you. I come to you, Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Set me free. Set me free from necromancy, from witchcraft, from black magic, from horoscope from fanaticism, from religiosity, from idolatry. Forgive me if I have put my trust in fortune tellers. 
I did not put my trust in you. Forgive me for all the wrong things that I have done, knowingly or unknowingly. And today I surrender my life to you. I put my trust in you, Lord Jesus, completely, totally, absolutely. Set me free and make me the child that you want me to be. Write my name in the book of life and give me eternal life. Today, I make you my Lord. I make you my God. I make you my Savior. In the name of Jesus. And He is Lord. Every Philippines declare it. He is Lord. Jesus he is Lord. He is Lord. He has risen from the dead. He has risen from the dead and he Every knee shall bow, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, hallelujah, hallelujah, yes, oh God. Lord Jesus, we declare your Lordship upon our nation, upon the Philippine Islands. Let Jesus Christ reign. Let the truth of Jesus Christ prevail in the name of Jesus. And let every knee bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Kurabashanda. Yes, we declare it upon the Philippine Islands. Jesus Christ is Lord. Libyanda Rabakai. Every time confess that Jesus. Kapatid, kapwa Pilipino, kung ikaw ay inaabot ng tinig na to, alam ko mahal mo ang relihiyon mo. Pero hindi ang relihiyon mo ang namatay sa krus ng Kalbaryo, ang Panginoong Yeso Kristo. Kaya naman sa oras at araw na to, siya ang tanggapin mo. Surrender to God your life, not to your religion. And give up and surrender your religiosity and fanaticism and idolatry. Do not justify, but humble yourself before God and say, Lord, I have worshipped idols. I have put my trust in the dead. But today, I turn a leaf and make you my true Lord, God and Savior. Yes, confess it. Is my Lord. Yes, declare it. Jesus Christ is your Lord from this day forward. I am setting you in the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. 
I am setting you free from religiosity and fanaticism. I am setting you free from fortune telling, necromancy, black magic, sorcery, witchcraft, and all demonic practices. Be set free in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. And any demonic infirmity, affliction in your body, in the name of Jesus, I cast it out in Jesus' name. You demon spirit of cancer, you demon spirit of brain tumor, you demon spirit of cancer of the blood, cancer of the liver, all the demon spirit of lusts, in the name of Jesus, I cast you out in Jesus' name. Get out in Jesus' name. Even the demon spirit of homosexuality and lesbianism, all the demon spirit of lust and flesh, I cast it out in Jesus' name. And I set you free. Receive your deliverance. Receive your healing. You are free in the name of Jesus. For whoever the Son sets free is free indeed. Rabashakataka. I declare Jesus is Lord over the Philippine Islands and all the nations of the world. Every tongue will confess. Every nation will see that Jesus Christ is Lord. And it is he who deserves worship, not the dead, not the saints, not the idols of this world, <laughs> but Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for showering mercy upon this nation who has been enslaved to religiosity for the longest time. Panginoon ang mga mahal namin sa buhay na alipin ng relihiyon ng panatisismo. Palayain mo sila, O oh Diyos. Hinihingi po namin ang kanilang kaligtasan at kalayaan. We pray for our beloved loved ones who have been enslaved to religiosity and fanaticism, that God, you set them free, and set them free indeed, in the name of Jesus. Every Sabihin po nating lahat, Jesus Christ is the Lord of the Philippine Islands. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my family. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my business. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my body. Jesus Christ is the Lord of my household. Shikita Karabakanda. There is no other name that is more powerful but the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you, Lord, because today you have set us free and you have made this nation your kingdom. You have made this nation. You have made this nation truly a Christian nation and not an idolatrous nation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we give you praise. We give you glory for you alone deserve it. Thank you for setting us free from religiosity and fanaticism. Thank you for freeing this nation from idolatry. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. To your name be the glory forever and ever. Amen and amen. Amen. At uh, indeed, we have been blessed again. So, kahit po mabagyo, amen po ba? Mas malakas pa rin po ang presensya ng Panginoon na ating naramdaman. Amen? 
So, no storm, no disaster, no virus can go against the will of the Lord, especially for the wonderful message we have heard today. Amen. So, with the message, I know the bondage of um, the evil spirit of religiosity have been defeated. Amen? Amen. 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 So, let us just go uh, quickly para po sa ating tithes and offering. So, brothers and sisters, for those who do not know yet why we give tithes and offering, so we give tithes and offering based on Malachi 3.10. So, Malachi 3.10 for the Christians who already know, amen, so Malachi 3.10 is about the 10% of giving. So, brothers and sisters, yung mga matatagal na sa Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship International, and those for who do not know yet, amen, we give tithes and offering, which is the 10% of our uh, income or of our allowances. Amen. So right now, I know that we are going through um, the crisis, but we are slowly, amen, we are slowly moving forward. So ngayon po, unti-unti na tayo nakakabangon at alam ko ang mga tunay na kristyano ay never nalugmok. Amen. So brothers and sisters, again for our tithes, we have Malachi 3.10. So how about our offering? So the offering is our giving of whatever our heart's desire is. Amen po ba? So, it's on Proverbs 3, verse 9, and also on Proverbs 11, verse 25. So, it says here, Honor the Lord with your wealth and with your first fruits. Amen po ba? So, we are giving our tithes, our offering, and also we have love gift for the man and woman of God, and we also have our sacrifices. So, why do we actually give? Amen. Because Acts 6 verse 4 says, We have to devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. Amen po ba? So this is what I want to emphasize. This is the time that we have to devote ourselves to the ministry of the word. So for those who do not know, what is the mandate of Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship International? It's actually to bring everyone to their highest calling and perfect destiny in Christ. And we can only achieve this if we actually propagate the word of God Continuously. Amen? So ngayon po, mas aggressive, mas, mas aggressive po tayo sa pagpapalaganat ng salita ng Diyos. Amen po ba? Lalo na sa araw na ito, kung saan ang mundo ay nagsiselebrate, amen, ng, hindi ko din alam bakit, ng kasamaan, amen po ba? At sineselebrate ang kung ano-ano ang paniniwala, amen, such as Halloween, which is not very pleasing to the Lord. So brothers and sisters, marami po ngayon nangangailangan ng katotohanan. Napakaganda po ng salitang ating narinig. So we have to take part, amen, in trying to propagate the world, the word. So right now, where will we give, where will we put your tithes and offering? We are continuously opening our evangelism again, amen po ba? Nakakatuwa po, matagal po tayong naudlot sa ating pagpunta sa iba't ibang probinsya, pero ngayon pagbubukas ng ating mga um, cities and provinces, we are able to go to our provinces again. Amen? So just our report, our man of God and our full-time ministers, our with pastoras, amen, pumunta po ulit sila sa Gimba, sa Nueva Ecija, amen? So we were able to check upon our brothers and sisters who are in need, amen, not just the word of God, but the continuous encouragement. Because right now, we know that hindi lang tayo sa Manila ang napektuhan, buong Pilipinas po apektado. So, napak nakakatuwa po na patuloy po tayo nakakapag-evangelize, natuloy po tayo nakakabalik. Amen po ba? At ano pong ginagamit natin sa panggas, sa ating pangkain, amen? sa binili po nating internet para po ibigay sa ating mga kapatid, para makapanood din po sila ng ating mensaheng ito. Lahat po yan galing sa ating tithes and offering. Amen, brothers and sisters. So, lahat ng binibigay nyo ay hindi po abstract. Amen? Wala po yan, hindi po yan na um, ating... Um, ginagasto sa mga walang kabuluhan, kundi patuloy po natin yung ginagamit para patuloy nating i-devote ang ating sarili, ang ating uh, ministeryo, amen, to the minister of the word. So brothers and sisters, please be part of this. And also, our anniversary is coming. So our church anniversary is coming. Amen po ba? At ngayon po, gusto po natin maging maayos, gusto po natin maging maganda ang ating uh, church anniversary and we need funding for that. So brothers and sisters, we also have our radio and TV ministry. So, patuloy po yan at mas kailangan po natin yan ngayon. Because not everyone can go to the actual site, to the actual church. So, we actually, we are trying to expand our radio and TV ministry, our social media ministry. So, all of these need funding. Amen po ba? 
And also, um, besides our evangelism, our radio and TV ministry, patuloy din po tayong nagbabayad ng ating pastoral house. Amen po ba? So, I hope that we are continuously being a part of this. Amen? So, ano po ang pangako ng Lord sa lahat ng ito? Very simple. Amen? James 1 verse 17. Every good gift and perfect gift comes from the Lord. Amen? So, napakasimple lang po sa ating pagbibigay. Ang lahat ng magaganda, dakilang regalo ay galing sa Panginoon. Amen? So, ang ating pong mga regalo ay sure na yan eh. Pero kailangan po natin pagsikapin. Amen? We have to please the Lord. And that is through our giving, our tithes, our offering, our love gifts. Amen po ba? So, brothers and sisters, let us not forget giving, especially now that we are called to devote more to the Word of the Lord. Amen po ba? Marami pong nangangailangan ngayon. Marami pong ligaw ngayon. Ang mga maling mensahe ay patuloy na nakikita natin sa social media. Amen? Kanina po nag scroll ako sa Facebook. Merong ask yung isang indyano. Grabe, ang dami niyang views. Amen po ba? Marami pong tinatanong sa kanya tungkol sa katotohanan. Mysticism po ang tawag nila. At nakakalungkot po na maraming naniniwala, pati mga Pilipino, nagtatanong sa kanya imbis na lumapit ngayon sa Panginoon. Amen po ba? So brothers and sisters, kung gano'n po ka-aggressive ang, ang, ang mundo, amen, ang mga demonyo, amen, ang other spirits, amen, in trying to evangelize the word, amen, through their wrong beliefs, dapat po tayo mga tunay na kristyano na may totoong mandate, mas agresibo din po tayo, amen, and we need funding, we need your support, amen, because right now, amen, kailangan po natin ifan ang ating social media, kailangan po natin um, i-share, i-like, amen? Kailangan po tayo maging active sa ating pag-share and like. The man of God is trying to do his best. We are trying to do our best to share, amen? So just do your part. Kami po ang magpo-post. Kailangan lang po i-share, amen? Napakasimple po. Everything is just a click away. Amen po ba? So going back to our tithes and offering, if you are, and I know that you have been touched by the Lord for your tithes and offering, I will be putting in the comment section, yung mga information and details. Amen po ba? But also, please do message us our Facebook page. Nakakatuwa po na patuloy pong umaangat ang ating likers and ating followers. So, hopefully, patuloy po tong dumami. Amen po. So, for our um, tithes, offering, pledges, donations, you may contact us through the Facebook amen, fan page. Just click the message, PM us. Kung gusto nyo po tanongin kung paano. Amen po ba? Please do, please do PM us. Also for the contact information, please contact um, 0918-917-6979 0918-917-6979 or you may contact 0933-863-9403 0933-863-9403 Amen? At ngayon po, napakadali na lang magbigay. We have GCash. So for our GCash, we have 0956 3914282. Amen po ba? So again, 0956-391-4282. Also, we have BPI, BDO, Palawan, LBC, whatever means you can think of, you can also send them to us. So for those information, tanangin nyo na lang po kami sa Facebook page or sa numbers na aking sinabi. So brothers and sisters, wala na po ngayong excuse para kalimutan magbigay. Amen po ba? And also for our brothers and sisters na medyo matanda na, hindi alam to, Alam ko ngayon na pwede nyo ipasabay sa ating mga attendees na nakakapunta sa church. Pero uh, pala, um, let me just remind those um, our attendees, pastors and pastoras na pinapasabay po. Ibigay nyo lang po. Amen. Para patuloy po natin siyang ma-record at ma-account. Amen po ba? So also to those who will be sending their tithes and offering online, please do PM us for the receipt, for the designation, para alam po natin kung sa tithes and offering po to. Amen po ba? So, para patuloy po natin siyang ma-record for transparency and accountancy purposes. So, that's it. So, let's just pray for our tithes and offering before we actually end our, um, our Sunday service this afternoon. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Father God, for the wonderful day that you have given us despite the storm. Thank you, Father God, because we have heard this message. Lord, thank you, Father God, for the people who are listening and who open their hearts to give unto you. Lord, right now, I pray for continuous blessings to be upon them. Bless them economically, Father God. 
Lord, lahat ng kanilang pinagkakitaan, patuloy mong ipagpagpalain, Father God, payamanin, Father God, at lahat ng kanilang yaman, lahat ng kanilang kikitain ay maaalala, ni, ay now ay ma-remind sila na ito'y galing sa'yo at patuloy nila itong ibabalik para sa'yo. Lord, thank you, Father God, for the tithes and offering that we are continuously um, receiving. Lord, may this tithes and offering may only be used for your glory, especially in these end times, Father God. Lord, bless that uh, our upcoming church anniversary may it be a success, Father God, ngayon pa lamang. And Lord, right now, we pray, Father God, that you you continuously, Father God, raise, Father God, our um, self-esteem, lalo na sa mga nangangailangan ngayon, Father God, sa mga nagda-doubt, Father God, kung nasaan ka sa kanilang buhay, Lord, sa mga naghihirap, Father God, Lord, i-remind mo sila na Ikaw ang Diyos nila, Father God, at Ikaw ang tutulong sa kanila makaahon sa lahat ng problema at kahirapan na ito. Lord, sa mga nakapakinig na walang uh, means para makapagbigay, Father God, bless them, Father God. Open the doors and opportunities for them to give. Lord, right now, we just want to give back to you all the praise and glory. And every Christian and every um, KOJF says, Amen and Amen. Amen. Sige po, at tayo ay dadako sa ating closing prayer at uh, patuloy po tayo magbigay. Before we end this uh, session for this afternoon, uh, announcement for this coming anniversary lang po. Uh, just like what uh, Apostle Joshua said a while ago, our church anniversary is fast approaching. It will be on December. Uh, and there's no exact date pa, but this is this will be on December. Amen? Ano man ang mangyari, ano man ang krisis na dumating, crisis na dumating, ano mang pandemic ang dumating, hindi mapipigilan ng jablo ang church anniversary ng KOJF. Amen? At yan ang pangahawakan natin dahil yan ang pangako ng Diyos. Saan man tayo dumaan, apoy man o tubig, hindi tayo mapapaano dahil tayo ay nasa kingdom of Jesus, a kingdom that cannot be shaken. At sa darating nga pong anniversary, uh, tulad ng ating mga nakagawian ng mga nakaraang taon, meron tayong mga t-shirts na ipinapalabas, mga statement shirts na kung saan doon ay nakalagay ang ating theme. And for this year, our theme is I will make no I will make Jesus known to all the world. So we have to wear it we have to declare it. We have to announce to the world that we will make Jesus known to all the world through our lives. Amen. Amen. And through the Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship, ay idideklara natin ang tuloy-tuloy si Jesus sa ating mga buhay. So, yan po ay ipapalabas na natin at uh, naglilista na po tayo ng mga orders we have sizes for kids. Uh, siguro mga nag-start tayo sa mga 3 years old. Yan. As young as that, meron na tayong mga t-shirt for them. So, from 3 years old hanggang sa may isip mong pinaka malaking size. <laughs> so, depende sa size, kung magkano yung price niyan, syempre, uh, Doon din binabase natin yung, yung presyo natin. So, we have t-shirts para sa kids, para sa youth, para sa leaders, ay polo shirt. Yan. We have sizes for uh, ladies, yung mga slim, mga petite. So, we have also sizes for uh, hindi gaanong petite. So, we have unisex Para sa kanila, tsaka sa men's, men's size. So, yun po, uh, doon nagdedepende tayo sa price. Pero, you have to uh, tell us kung ano yung kukunin ninyo, kung anong size, kung ilan, at kung uh, papaanong mode of payment ninyo uh, babayaran. You can PM us or text, text us sa mga numbers din na binigay ni Apostle Josh kanina. So, we can... Uh, collect all those lists na uh, ibibigay sa amin para mabilang namin kung ilan ang mga ipapagawa namin 
t-shirts. So we have to wear it kasi nga we have to declare that yeah. Jesus Christ is our Lord, God, and Savior of our lives. Yeah. Hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, kundi sa buong mundo, Amen. to all the world. Amen? At hindi tayo mayayanig ng kahit na ano pa man yeah. dahil si Jesus ang ating Panginoon Diyos sa tagapagligtas. So, dahil nalalapit na rin ang ating anniversary, we are encouraging all of you to support this coming anniversary. We are asking you to give sacrificially. Uh, na hindi lang yung inyong pong ano tithes and offerings kasi sa mga darating na panahon ay gagastos tayo para sa anniversary katulad ng mga nakagawian natin at sa oras na ito sa panahong katulad nito medyo mas magastos dahil uh, kailangan nating uh, saluhin yung mga o oh, sunduin yung mga attendees natin dahil wala pa tayong mga magaga- maayos na Uh, transportation as of now. So, sa mga darating na panahon ay pag-uusapan kung papaano susunduin, kung papaano hahatiin o papaano ang gagawin sa mga uh, magagana para sa programa ng anniversary sa darating na December. So, we have to uh, collect money from you. We, you have to give sacrificially hindi lang yung inyong mga ibinibigay na, na regular na pagbibigay, kundi sacrificially talaga. Pag sinabing sacrificially, aside dun sa binigay mo na at dun sa mga nakalaan mo na para ibigay, aside doon ay meron ka pang ibibigay para sa particularly sa anniversary. So, kailangan natin itong gawin para masustain yung ating financial needs sa ministeryong ito. Kaya, We are encouraging all of you, even if you are not here in the Philippines, if you are from uh, other parts of the, the world, you can send us your sacrificial giving. And you can also send us your tithes and offerings as well. And if you are giving to God, if you are giving to this ministry, you are not giving to, the, to men. You are giving to God. Amen. Amen. So the Lord alone will bless you. Not from us, but from God. He is richer than us. Mas mayaman po ang Diyos kaysa sa amin. So, He can uh, sustain you. He can provide for all your needs. He can give you back what you have given to us. What you have given to this ministry. So, uh, siguro naman ang, ang ministeryong ito ay nakita nyo na lumago, tumaas, at tuloy-tuloy na nagpapalaganap ng salita ng Diyos. So, ganun din ang inyong pagbibigay dapat. Ang inyong pagkakaloob at pagsasakripisyo sa ministeryong ito at para sa Diyos mismo. So, yan po ang ating uh, announcement para sa darating na anniversary. And wait for further announcement para sa, ma- sa programa na darating sa, susunod na, sa mga susunod pang linggo. And uh, next Sunday will be it is November 8, uh, church anniversary ng Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship Gimba Chapter. So, lahat ng malapit sa Gimba, lahat ng uh, nasa vicinity ng Nueva Ecija o nasa karatig uh, probinsya, Tarlac, Nueva Vizcaya, at yung mga karatig pa noon, You are invited to join us as we celebrate 7th year anniversary of Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship uh, Gimba Chapter. So you are welcome. Ano man ang iyong salita, ano man ang iyong uh, lahi, you are welcome to join us. So yan po ay November 8 on Sunday, 9 o'clock in the morning. So you, you can invite also your friends, your relatives, and all your loved ones. So, yan po ay victorious, glorious, and uh, the greatness of God will be declared on that day. Amen. So, sa oras pong ito, I want everyone to stand up. And I ask you to remain in the presence of God as we thank Him for this day, for His message, for the woman of God that He used in our lives today let us close our eyes and bow down our heads as we pray thank you father god for this wonderful day even if
the storm we we feel the storm we feel the strong wind outside this vicinity but we know father god that your power is more powerful and we can feel it we can experience it and we thank you lord this day that you've given us this message reminding us that we don't have to practice what the world is practicing right now hindi namin kailangan gawin ang ginagawa ng mundo panginoon alam namin iyon at pinaalala mo muli and through the woman of god you use this day salamat po panginoon sa buhay niya dahil tuloy-tuloy niya itong pinapangaral tuloy-tuloy niyang ipinapaalala sa bawat isa na kami ay hindi para roon na kami ay hindi para sa mundo na mag-celebrate o magdiwang ng All Saints Day or All Souls Day we are here for you Father God we are here to be used by you to follow your ways kaya Panginoon salamat po sa buhay niya salamat po sa aral mo po Panginoon ilagay mo po ng mas malalim pa sa aming mga puso ang aral na ito sapagkat alam namin Panginoon na kami kapag kami sumunod sa iyo meron din kasunod na reward Panginoon ang aming mga pagsunod kaya Lord, salamat po at selyohan mo po, Panginoon, ang mga salitang binitawa ng lingkod mo. At ilagay mo po ng mas malalim pa sa aming mga buhay. At hindi, kami, hindi namin makita, Panginoon, hindi kami mahawa ng anumang celebration ng mundo, Lord God. Hahawakan namin ng matindi ang aral mo. At ito ang aming paniniwalaan. Ito ang aming paninindigan. Ito ang aming ididiklara at ito ang aming ipamamahagi sa bawat kaluluwa Panginoon na naliligaw ng landas at naniniwala sa ganitong pamamaraan o sa ganitong mga tradisyon at kultura. Salamat po o Diyos ng marami sapagkat alam namin na sa kabila ng bagyo, ng unos ng buhay at maging ng mga pagbaha at mga daluyong, Nariyan ka na sumasama sa amin. Sinasamahan mo kami ng iyong presensya. Iniingatan mo po kami at proteksyonan, Panginoon. Kaya naman, Lord, sa bawat isa na naglaan ng oras sa araw na ito, mula pa kami ng umaga, Panginoon, sa morning session, Lord God, i-bless mo po ang bawat isa. Pagpalain mo po ang lahat, Panginoon, ang dumalot na kinig, Panginoon. Ang lahat ng mga nag-share, Lord God, ang lahat, Panginoon, ng nag-watch party, Panginoon. Let them be blessed, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. At hayaan mo po, Panginoon, na sa bawat isa sa amin, sa pag-uwi namin sa araw na ito, ang pag-iingat mo ang sumaamin, Lord God. Hanggang sa aming mga tahanan, Panginoon. At sa bawat tahanan ng mga nanonood, nakikinig, at nag-view, Panginoon, ng iyong ng live streaming na ito, Lord God. Let your blessing come upon them, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And let your protection be upon us also, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Salamat po, Diyos, ng marami at muli sa mga darating pang linggo. Ay babalik kami sa lugar na ito, uhaw, gutom, at nananabik na maranasang muli ang iyong presensya at ma- malaman muli ang pinakapuso mo, Panginoon, para sa amin. Dakilang Diyos, muli po, Panginoon, itinataas po namin ang Kingdom of Jesus Fellowship International. Ang lingkod mo, the man of God, Apostle Ricardo Di Carillo, the woman of God, Prophet Shan and Arcarillo, their sons, Father God, ikaw ang mag-ingat at magprotekta sa kanila. Let your blessings be upon them, Lord. More than they expect, Lord God. Higit pa po sa mga naranasan nila, Lord. Higit pa po sa kayang ibigay ng tao, Panginoon. At higit pa po, Panginoon, sa mga bagay dito sa mundong ibabaw, Lord God. 
Salamat po sa kanilang buhay. At muli, Panginoon, sa mga darating pang panahon hanggang sa pag-celebrate namin, Lord, ng, yung anivers ng anniversary ng KOJF, Lord, samahan mo po ang bawat isa at samahan mo po ng iyong malakas sa presensya ang lingkod mo sa kanyang pagbabahagi ng iyong mga salita. At Father God, sa araw na ito, muli, Panginoon, na ang presensya mo ang aming naranasan, ang kaalaman at karunungan mo ang siyang sumaamin. Kaya naman, Panginoon, maingat naming ibinabalik sa iyo ang lahat ng kapurihan, ang lahat ng karangalan, pagdakila at pasasalamat sa natatanging pangalan ng aming Panginoong Jesus. Amen. Amen.